From traffic flow theory, we have some assumed relationships between the traffic speed, specifically the space mean speed, which is known as U, the flow, which are referred to as Q, and the density, which is known as K. These relationships don't perfectly represent field conditions, but they are uh, fairly representative, and uh, they're the common assumptions for speed, flow, and density in traffic engineering, and specifically traffic flow theory. So flow is equal to the speed times the density, or Q equals U times K. The speed equals the flow divided by the density, so U equals Q divided by K. And the density equals the flow divided by the speed, or K equals Q divided by U. So before we get into the, the details and the specifics of equations, I want to talk just a big picture about speed, flow, and density relationships. And let's start with speed and density. So on the x-axis, we have the density, and it ranges from zero at the origin up to the jam density k sub j. So that's where no vehicles are moving. They're all just sitting in a lane of traffic. This is in vehicles per mile per lane. On the y-axis, we have the speed in miles per hour, and it goes from zero up to the free flow speed, u sub f. The relationship between speed and density is linear, and we have two regimes, and we'll see this in our other graphs as well. So we have a, a regime here that's under capacity, and then we have the regime here that is over capacity. So the dashed line represents being over capacity, the solid line represents being at or under capacity. There is also a, a relationship uh, at this point for the speed and the density at capacity, so that's the U sub cap and K sub cap. So that's where those two interact. Our next relationship is density and flow. So density, again, in vehicles per mile per lane, flow in vehicles per hour per lane. And we'll see this is a parabolic shape. We again have a portion that's solid and a portion that is dashed. So that's at or under capacity, and then over capacity is our dashed line. At the peak of our flow, we have the flow at capacity, Q sub cap. And that's also the maximum flow that we're going to experience. And that occurs and coincides with our density at capacity. Now, if we draw a line from the origin to that point, we're going to the slope of that line is going to give us the speed at capacity, which we saw previously on our density and speed relationship. So, given this parabolic shape, for a flow of zero, you can actually have two different experiences. You can have no flow because there's no vehicle, so your density is zero vehicles per mile per lane. So there's no no traffic on the road, so that no flow and no density. We could also have the opposite where there's no flow, but there's a lot of cars there or vehicles there. So at their jam density, it's basically a linear parking lot, lots of cars sitting on the road, none of them moving. So there's lots of density, plenty of vehicles per mile per lane, but there's no flow, there's no vehicles moving per hour in that lane. So that's our relationship between flow and density. And then finally we have speed and flow. So on our x-axis we have the flow, again vehicles per hour per lane. On the y-axis we have the speed in miles per hour. So our flow goes up to the maximum of Q sub cap. And that's going to be our maximum flow, our flow at capacity. Our highest speed is our free flow speed, U sub F. Uh, we do have our speed at capacity that coincides with the flow, maximum flow or flow at capacity. The slope of the line that connects from the origin to that max flow, the slope is going to give us the density at capacity, K sub cap. Similar is a parabolic shape again, so similar to our flow density relationship, when we're looking at speed and flow, we also can have multiple regimes. There's one that's under capacity and then one that's over capacity. Again, the over capacity portion is shown as a dashed line, and this is where things really become unstable and can break down. So this is particularly in the over capacity conditions is where real field conditions may differ from these kind of idealized assumptions. 
but we can also see here that at um, for a flow of zero, you can either have no speed or you can have free flow speed. And so let's start with the, the free flow speed case. If you have very few vehicles, let's assume one vehicle, so one vehicle per hour per lane, you that vehicle will probably be operating at free flow speed because there's no other vehicles to um, in its way, so that vehicle, that driver is going to choose their speed, their lane, um, those types of things. You can also have where you're over capacity, you can have no speed and no flow, and that's because you're at the jam density. So nobody's nobody's moving, so therefore there's no flow, there's no speed. And so you can see that the three of these relate to each other. It's the same three variables, just looking at them in different perspectives, looking at the relationships between them. So again, speed, flow, density, these are the relationships between them. Two of them have parabolic shapes. The speed and the flow and the flow and the density are parabolic and then linear for the speed and density. So let's take a look at an example. We're told that we have an average density of 25.1 vehicles per mile. A flow of 800 vehicles per hour was measured and we're asked to find the speed of this road in miles per hour. So recall that speed equals the flow divided by the density. So the speed equals 800 vehicles per hour divided by 25.1 vehicles per mile gives us a speed of 31.9 miles per hour. And that is answer C. So now looking a little more closely at the speed and density relationship, our use of F is our free flow speed, K sub J is our jam density, K sub cap is the density at capacity, U sub cap is the speed at capacity. So on our x-axis, the density goes from zero up to our jam density. This is in vehicles per mile per lane. Our speed goes from zero to the free flow speed U sub F. And it is a linear relationship. The solid portion of the line is under capacity. The dashed portion of the line is over capacity. And we do have a point where we reach our speed at capacity and our density at capacity, and that's defined by our maximum flow rate or our flow rate at capacity that we'll see on our other relationship graphs. The speed density model, where we're really looking at space mean speed when we talk about these relationships, so speed more specifically is the space mean speed. So the space mean speed is equal to the free flow speed times one minus the specific density at a for a given situation divided by the jam density, so K divided by K sub J. Next we have speed and flow. So speed going from zero to the free flow speed in miles per hour, the flow going from zero up to our Q sub cap, and this is in vehicles per hour per lane. We also have our jam density K sub J, which is the slope of the line um, as we reach low flow and low speed. And at our Q sub cap, we have our uh, speed at capacity U sub cap. Uh, the slope of the line that connects the origin and our maximum flow rate is K sub cap. That's the capacity, the density at capacity. Our Greenshield's maximum flow rate is the uh, maximum flow Q max or Q cap equals the jam density times the free flow speed divided by four. So K sub J times U sub F divided by four. And then we also have relationships if we're looking for the actual density for a given situation. So K equals the jam density times one minus the speed divided by the free flow speed. For the flow at a given point is equal to the jam density times the space mean speed minus the space mean speed squared divided by the free flow speed. And now we have the relationship between flow and density. So density, again, vehicles per mile per lane. Flow is the vehicles per hour per lane, so how much is moving through. Our density goes from zero up to our jam density, K sub J. Our flow goes from zero up to our maximum flow, 
Q sub cap or Q max. We can also find the point of density at capacity. This is where we reach our maximum flow rate. If we look at the slope of the line between zero and our max flow, we're going to get the speed at capacity U sub cap. And the slope of the line for um, low flow rates and low density is our free flow speed. So again, that regime where we have uh, very few vehicles, so the vehicles that are there can choose their speed and very low density, so no other vehicles on the roadway. That gives us our free flow speed, U sub F. Our equations again, Q equals U times K. Uh, more specifically, if we want to look at the maximum or capacity uh, regime, Q sub cap equals U cap times K sub cap. So the maximum flow rate equals is equal to the speed at capacity and the density at capacity. And if we want to look at a specific location's flow rate or specific scenario, the flow rate Q is equal to the free flow speed times K minus K squared divided by K sub J. And that's our jam density. So the density at capacity is just half of the jam density, K sub J divided by two. The speed at capacity is just half of the free flow speed, so U sub F divided by two. And the max flow rate or the flow rate at capacity is the free flow speed U sub F times the jam density K sub J divided by four. So looking at an example, we're told that we have a road with a jam density of 230 vehicles per mile and a free flow speed of 71 miles per hour. When the average speed is 50 miles per hour, we want to know the density of this roadway in vehicles per mile. So we're going to start looking at our speed and density relationship. We're told that our free flow speed U sub F is 71 miles per hour. Our jam density K sub J is 230 vehicles per mile. And we want to find K when U equals 50 miles per hour. So where our line is 50 miles per hour on our Y axis, we want to determine what the K, the corresponding K or density value is. So K equals K times J, K, K sub J times one minus U divided by U sub F. So our K at 50 miles per hour is equal to 230 vehicles per mile times one minus 50 miles per hour divided by 71 miles per hour. It's gonna give us a density at 50 miles per hour of 68 vehicles per mile. And that is answer B. So, what else can we find? We went through a lot of equations. I don't want to stop with just that one example. What else can we find out about this scenario? And some of them, some of these equations, we're going to come up with the same values, and that's good. They'll, they'll check out because some of the, we do have multiple ways to solve the same problem. So again, free flow speed, 71 miles an hour, jam density, 230 vehicles per mile, and the density at 50 miles per hour is 68 vehicles per mile. So our max flow rate, our max flow Q max, is the jam density times the free flow speed divided by four. So 230 vehicles per mile times 71 miles per hour divided by four gives a max flow rate of 4,083 vehicles per hour. Now, in practice, that's a very high flow rate. So um, you, you're probably not going to see this in, in practice in the lane, but um, using these numbers, uh, this is the value we get, 4,083 vehicles per hour. The density at capacity is just half the jam density, so 230 vehicles per mile divided by two gives us 115 vehicles per mile for the density at capacity. We can also solve for the speed at capacity, so U sub F divided by two, so this is 71 miles per hour divided by two, so our speed at capacity is 35.5 miles per hour. We can also find our flow rate at capacity, and we've already have found this is another way to solve it. So the flow at capacity is the speed at capacity times the density at capacity, so 35.5 miles per hour times 115 vehicles per mile gives us 4,083 vehicles per hour. So that checks out with our previous equation. We can also solve for the max flow 
which is equal to the free flow speed times the jam density divided by four. So 4,083 vehicles per hour equals 71 miles per hour times the jam density divided by four. So the jam density is four times 4,083 vehicles per hour divided by 71 miles per hour gives a jam density of 230 vehicles per mile, and that checks out with the jam density we were given. So we can also solve for specific flow. So the flow Q is equal to the free flow speed times K minus K squared divided by the jam density. So 71 miles per hour times 68 vehicles per mile minus 68 vehicles per mile squared divided by 230 vehicles per mile gives us a flow of 3,400 vehicles per hour. We can also solve for the flow at this given uh, perspective, which is equal to the jam density times the space mean speed minus the space mean speed squared divided by the free flow speed. So this is 230 vehicles per mile times 50 miles per hour minus 50 miles per hour squared divided by 71 miles per hour. And we similarly find the flow of 3,400 vehicles per hour. So this checks out with that previous equation.